All right, everybody, this is Ross. I wanted to talk to you guys about the stone fruits that we actually talked about in a video in late March. If you guys remember in late March, we had those really cold nights, those three nights in a row. For most of us in the Northeast, we were gonna see temperatures in the low 20s, even maybe lower, depending on where you guys live. Here I saw 20 degrees, then 21 degrees, and then 22 degrees. And that's pretty abrupt and uh, extreme for these apricots, plums, and pluots that we looked at. Because these are the trees on the property out of all the fruit trees, all the fruiting plants, the vines, the shrubs, all that stuff that I grow, these are the things that flower first. And the flowers turn into fruits. So if the flowers are open, and especially this apricot here was totally in full bloom, and that winter low, I mean, it was really the springtime at that point, but that 20 degree low comes in, that's way too extreme for something like this apricot. And we were very concerned, a lot of us, you guys in the, in the channel and the comments were all very concerned that I was gonna lose all of my apricots. You guys were concerned for your own trees. Um, and I did an update video after that. We talked about how actually the plums, the pluots, and even this apricot got through that whole thing and actually have some fruit on them. Now the, the fruits are a bit more progressed. I wanna talk to you guys and show you some of the fruits and actually talk about what happened and kind of, there's even a, a plus side to this whole thing that uh, we saw late in late March, but also to talk about the form, because if you guys recall, this is also the Dave Wilson nursery style of planting that I have, or one of like three or four plantings I have on the property, guys, in that manner. And we talked about how I'd rather just have one fruit tree right in the center and graft multiple varieties onto it. Um, and one of the things we mentioned, though, if you're going to do this, is that imagine that all the trees in here are the different scaffolds. They are the different limbs of the tree or one single tree because that's kind of what this is. Even though there are multiple trees planted in the same hole in very close proximity, they're all basically one tree. And what I need to do is basically come in here into the center now that it is the spring, now that we're getting into the summer, and I need to make sure that the growth in the center here is being checked because as I said, the growth where the sun hits the trees the tree naturally thinks, oh, well, you know what? The sun's there, why not actually put out some growth? Let's make use of that space. And that's typically what the trees do is that after they start to uh, get pruned as well, the hormones change in the trees and you can see where I made some of these cuts and then all these growth points now start to form all along the tree. Here's a, a good example over here the same exact thing happened. I came right into the center of this tree and knocked off a lot of these branches. So I just came in here and stripped these off, just like you see. And that's kind of kind of give us a little bit of a head start on keeping the center open with the light, the airflow, giving us better fruit quality. Same thing over here with, with this Satsuma plum. We're just gonna come in here and remove some of this new growth, which I've already done for the most part. Look at those ladybugs. They're after the aphids, guys, they're after the aphids. So I wanna show you now the fruits on these trees because there's quite a bit, especially on this apricot. I was really uh, not too happy because I really wanted to see about 50 or so fruits this year. And I thought that winter low or that spring low that we saw of 20 degrees was enough to really damage a lot of the fruits and that I wouldn't even get to, get to 50, but I actually counted the number of fruits on here and there is actually roughly 50, very, very close. It's like 47, uh, which is pretty good for this tree because last year I only really got about 25 or so apricots on this tree. They're still very young, you know, these trees are still not as established as I would like them to be. But 25 was a pretty good number last year and I really wanted to double that this, this, this season. And I think we're gonna do that just about we're getting really close so it's pretty amazing and what was even interesting to see actually after we saw that low after a lot of the flowers had gotten damaged look at that right there is a flower so the tree is not they recognize this i think this is not normal for them to bloom this late in the season like that but uh, certainly the tree, I think, has recognized that. And normally, maybe even, even if the whole thing got damaged with uh, that cold and we lost all the flowers, I would see a lot more flowers potentially. 
there was about two or three that I saw on this tree. Um, so pretty darn interesting and that some varieties will actually rebloom. The other thing that can happen is that on this pluot as an example, we had many, many more flowers than the fruits that you see here on these trees. However, there's quite a bit. You know, this is definitely something like right here is just three plums. Right here is two plums, you know. Um, over here is probably 15 plums right in this little section. So the nice thing about this particular variety and this other pluot next to it is that they actually bloomed in succession and that depending on the stage of bloom that the blooms were in, well, those got damaged that were fully open, just like that apricot flower that we looked at over there. That is when subjected to a much lower temperature can be damaged um, or a higher temperature, excuse me. Whereas if the flowers are just not as open, they're not as far along in their progression, well, they can withstand colder temperatures. And that's exactly what happened here on these trees. They withstood that 20 degree low. And I have a really good crop of pluots this year on these two varieties. I think I have flavor grenade and um, flavor king, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see what the net, this one here, flavor grenade. And the other one here, the tags somewhere else. I'm not exactly sure, I have to check my records. The other nice thing actually, so there's three options, right? Is that maybe the tree reblooms, maybe the tree is in a different succession of blooming. The other option actually is to have a late blooming plum. And this is a prune plum here. It's called Italian prune plum. And this tree really didn't get hit at all by that cold because the, the flowers really hadn't even shown at that point. So pretty amazing stuff that you can have all these different varieties. That's why we've mentioned in the past diversity, not just diversity among species, but diversity among the species itself and having different varieties, right? There's so much genetic diversity out there between even just plums or apricots that it's, it's pretty amazing, guys. So that's the story here. That's what I wanted to show you guys, this little plot, update you guys on that. Uh, I didn't wanna just forget about it and then never come back to this whole thing. I'll talk about the fruits as they ripen. Hopefully we can keep this disease free. That's really the only thing at this point we have to do stay ahead on the summer or keep up on our summer pruning keep everything with good airflow and good light in there and hopefully fingers crossed we won't get disease thanks guys for watching hit that subscribe button we'll see you for the next one